going on guys? Well, with every best of the year list comes a worst of the year list. I don't have 15 choices for worst movie of the year. However, there are some really, really, really bad movies in 2021 in a, in a year that was mostly good for movies. You know, for most of the year, I struggled to round out a top 10 worst of the year list. That's just how good 2021 was. And I think that's because a lot of those movies were supposed to be released in 2020. And due to unfortunate circumstances in the world, they weren't. But there were some really shit movies in 2021. So let's talk about those, starting with some dishonorable mentions. The Unholy. Wow. You were a boring PG-13 horror movie. Go rot in a cave. Dear Evan Hansen, a musical that is the most manipulative thing I have ever seen. Don't watch this movie. And Red Notice. <laughs> More typical Netflix bullshit. We didn't make the list. I wish it did. Because it sucked! Alright, so those are my dishonorable mentions. Let's get into the list. Coming in at number 10. <laughs> Awake! Awake! Oh man, dude, I don't know what went into the filmmaking behind Awake because Gina Rodriguez has talent, for sure, but like the way this movie is edited, the way it is shot, is just, it's not cohesive. This felt like an amateur behind the camera, and the actual story is one of the most, it's an interesting concept, but it is one of the most boring movies of the year and guess what it's on netflix where boring movies and shitty movies go to die yeah my grudge against netflix is still strong and this movie didn't do anything to sell me on why netflix is a good streaming service <laughs> well we have another streaming movie coming in at number nine and that is infinite because you get maki mac as, in a past life, some ancient pharaoh or some bullshit. I don't know how Antoine Fugua could make such a bad movie, and it's because you have Mark Wahlberg as your leading man. Mark Wahlberg is such a terrible actor. Like, he's the same dude in everything. This movie proves that to an T. Loaded with exposition, loaded with shitty action scenes, loaded with a story that is not interesting at all, and trying to have a leading man like Mark Wahlberg carrying the movie on his back is not a good idea. Go rot on Paramount Plus. And God, the bad movies were on streaming services. I don't have to talk about them again or ever see them again on those streaming services. <laughs> Number eight is God, Trust. Man, this is a movie I actually didn't review, but you have Nickelodeon stars, CW stars, and I don't know type of stars that really, really, really try and sell you on what it means to someone when they find out that you're cheating on them and what the consequences are about cheating on somebody. But the main character ends up doing it herself. So it's a very manipulative movie that has nothing to say about that topic. It is literally one of the worst acted movies I have seen all year, and that's probably because Victoria Justice is not a lead actress at all. It was boring. I think boring is gonna be the most cliched word to describe in this video. Holy shit, three streaming movies taking up three spots on this list. That just proves the streaming doesn't care. <laughs> streaming movies being so bad locked down ah man i could not believe my eyes when i watched locked down Anne hathaway and chuetel Ejiofor have no chemistry together this was a slog it felt like it was a lot longer than it actually was go rot on hbo max locked down this was one of the first movies to come out of lockdown, and you name the movie Locked Down, I think that that's definitely going to have a negative connotation. Man, he, whew, 
streaming really killing everything this year. Holy shit. <laughs> Number six is another streaming movie. It's crazy, you know. Like I, you know, I didn't real realize this when I put this list together, but I'm realizing now that almost all of these movies on this list were not released theatrically. And thank God, The Woman in the Window was not released theatrically, like the original plan was. I cannot believe Amy Adams gave such a bad performance in this movie. She's such a great actress. She's one of my favorite actresses. Even though, even if I say I don't like her as Lois Lane, it doesn't take away from Amy Adams's acting ability. I think that her Lois Lane is written terribly, but I don't know what she did with this performance. The mystery in this movie was that uh, I don't even want to talk about it. You know, she saw a woman in the window. Can I rip this movie off of Netflix and throw it out the window? Can I, can I actually just throw Netflix out the window? Thank you. <laughs> Number five, where I believe it was released theatrically as well, but it was also on streaming because Warner Brothers had that deal with theaters where theaters and streaming the same day, Tom and Jerry. This movie didn't have to be made. Like, the hijinks were okay, but, like, why are we making a full-length movie based on Tom and Jerry? Tom and Jerry works more as little shorts, and you have, you have this movie populated by human characters who suck. This is the trap these type of movies fall into, and it makes the movie less funny to the point where you don't even care about the hijinks of Tom and Jerry. This is not even a Tom and Jerry movie. This is a movie that has, like, sketches of Tom and Jerry. It, Tom and Jerry are guest starring in their own movie. <laughs> Number four, movie I didn't review, but released on Disney Plus. Streaming is killing the industry this year. Home sweet home alone. I hated this movie. This was in contention for my least favorite movie of the year. That's how much it sucked. You cannot just stamp the Home Alone name onto anything, and that is essentially what all the major studios in Hollywood do. They see something, they write something, they make something, and they're like, well, we don't know what to call it. Let's just throw this name onto it, a household name, like Home Alone, and we'll get people to watch it. I don't know a single person that liked this movie. For a movie this bad, I was rooting for the burglars. I hated the kid. Archie, I love Archie Yates. He's so good in Jojo Rabbit, but this ain't it. You also have to do this whole in-universe thing where Buzz McAllister comes back and he's a cop. Oh, please. Jesus, now you're trying to ruin the original legacy of Home Alone and Home Alone 2? Fuck off. <laughs> You did it again, Netflix. You did it again. Coming in at number three, Thunder Force. Why do people think Melissa McCarthy is funny? She is not funny. Her jokes are all the same, and she just makes annoying voices and noises for the whole movie. This, I, I could not bear to watch another moment of this when I saw it. I had to watch this movie in parts, and it ain't even that long. I, had to, I watched it in parts over days. That's how bad this movie was. Octa what is Octavia Spencer doing in a movie like this? Jesus Christ, man. Netflix is on a roll in this list. <laughs> Speaking of Netflix, number two is He's All That. Yeah, you want to remake She's All That? I mean, a movie that's not even great to begin with. What? is the point. You have a social media star in Addison Ray, like somebody who's never acted before, popular again, a movie populated with Nickelodeon and Disney Channel stars that think they're actually making a great movie and <laughs> funny shit in the movie isn't funny. There are so many running jokes, so much product placement too, to the point where it is distracting. And the lead character is not very good. The supporting characters are not very good. They're all dumb asses. Netflix, get your shit together in 2022. And coming in at number one, another streaming movie is... <laughs> music. 
Yeah, Sia's attempt at a making a movie. You know what? She should just attempt to stick to music. You know what? She should just quit altogether. She, I don't think, I don't like her music. I totally did not like this movie. This is the most tone deaf movie of the year. I could not believe my eyes watching this movie. And Sia has come out and defended it and yelled at people. I'm like, no, girl, why don't you, you know, take a seat? Think about what you did. Go in the timeout corner. You probably had the idea for this as a music video. And then you're like, I want to extend it to a feature like movie. <laughs> yeah, no. The, the, yeah, no. Don't ever do that again. The actors and the actresses in this movie, for the, for what it's worth, they're doing the best they can with the absolute Bullshit they're given, but this just ain't it. You know, Hulu is innocent because they gave us Palm Springs last year, so that balances out. And Boss Level wasn't too bad. But Netflix, Paramount Plus, Disney Plus, that's it. Here we go. Netflix, delete. Disney Plus, delete. Paramount Plus, <laughs> you gave me a movie with Mark Wahlberg this year on streaming. Delete. Netflix is the biggest offender of this list. <laughs> Guys, so that's my list for the worst movies of 2021. Uh, all, the, all jokes aside, yeah, I do slightly have a grudge against Netflix, but most of what I was saying in this was just all jokes, you know, poking fun at them, which I probably shouldn't be doing, but I, you know, since what? I think all of these movies on my list were released on streaming services, I think it's proof that streaming services really don't care what kind of content they put out because they know people are just going to watch it anyways. That is not good. That is bad for the industry. And there's no way Red Notice was the most watched Netflix movie of the year. You think that they're actually telling the truth? Those numbers are fabricated. That's a total lie. That's bullshit. That's a big part of the problem. But mostly all the jokes and all the yelling aside in this video, it was mostly all in good fun. What were your least favorite movies of 2021? Drop me some feedback in the comment section below. I'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.